Hey everyone, in this video I will be detailing the top 30 structures in all of RL craft. There are hundreds upon hundreds of structures in RL craft, ranging from a small rock formation all the way to cities hundreds of blocks long. I will describe my rankings better at the end, but basically I rank the structures by loot quality for an average RL craft player. As you may be able to tell throughout the video, I used creative mode a lot in this since I couldn't find some of the rarer structures such as the Shivaxi monument. Without further ado, let's get right into it. First, some honorable mentions I feel necessary to include. This small campsite is a fairly common structure that contains medical items as well as some miscellaneous early game resources. This hobbit's hole, which can hold some ingots, paper, food, wood, armor, and some other convenient early game necessities. This floating like dock structure, which can be looted for an early to mid game bobble, as well as a few miscellaneous items and pet armor to melt for ingots. This mini battle tower, which holds the potential for some mid tier enchantment books and golden apples. This witch dungeon that has a lot of blaze powder and rabbit's feet for anyone who wants to tame a hippogriff. This witch tower, which has a redstone, two gold, one iron, one diamond, and one emerald block to mine, as well as some armor to melt for ingots. And lastly, for the honorable mentions, this crater base that has a diamond block, more lapis lazuli than you will ever know what to do with, saddles, food, low tier enchanted items, flint, slime, feathers, arrows, soul sand, nether wart, bookshelves, a few iron ingots, and a gas tier. It, in truth, it just had a lot of miscellaneous stuff, but I don't normally need any of that stuff, so I didn't put it in the top 30. But it is a very cool base. Now on to our top 30. Starting off at number 30 on our list is the Jungle Village. This structure is so rare that I couldn't even find the exact distance where one can find it, but my guess would be that it can be found once every 330 to 1666 jungle chunks, since those chunk increments are a common staple of structures around this grade. Regardless, the Jungle Village has a few lootable chests scattered around the large village. The structure seems to always have the same loot, so I gathered the notable stuff and put it in this shulker box for you all to see. This village also foreshadows something tragic happening to the inhabitants of this village and even the inhabitants of the world of Minecraft involving a huge black rock that fell from the sky. From the eerie state the village is currently in, it can only be assumed that something terrible did happen to the villagers. Is this just a tale told by an imaginative mod creator? Or is it something more? Number 29 the Galleon, aka Large Ship. I I'm not making this up, that's just what its name is. This structure has 41 anvils, 20 coal blocks, some helpful early game equipment in the lower chests, and two wither skeleton skulls to loot on deck. Also, for the rest of the video, I will continue to not detail everything you get from these structures, only the decent loot. Number 28. The Lighthouse. This structure has 25 iron blocks to take at the top, as well as a few chests with a random loot chance for a few items, usually containing food, a few iron or gold ingots, or a golden apple or two. This structure also has villagers and some bookshelves, but it is nothing too special besides the iron blocks, which gave it its rank at 28. Moving down to number 27, the Gorgon Temple. This structure was very hard to rank, since the value of a Gorgon is kind of tough to determine. Depending on the player's own set rules for themselves, this item can be equal to defeating a final boss, or it can be just a get out of jail free card or a method for a new home decoration. Regardless, for those Gorgon Head fans out there, as well as I couldn't bring myself to rank this structure over the next structure I'm going to talk about, the Gorgon Temple makes it into rank 27 on the best structures in all of our Elcraft list. Moving on down our list to number 26 comes an incredibly interesting structure, one of which that I have found on a few occasions and I can't help but get excited every time I do find it, and that structure is none other than the Cathedral of Madness. This structure is riddled with spawners and has a few chests with some instant healing potions, but the best loot in the structure lies within its ceiling. The ceiling to the structure holds a solid 51 iron blocks. This structure overall might not have the best loot, but finding one of these is certainly an exciting feeling. If you feel like fighting the mobs that spawn in here, the mob spawners as well as the zero light level will keep you busy for quite a while, giving you quite a bit of XP and some combat training. Next, on number 25, the Windmill Oasis Village. This structure gives a lot of XP by mining the wheat, some basic loot ranging from a few emeralds, medical supplies, a lot of wheat, and a few ingots, but it also has a chance to provide the player with up to two librarian villagers. For this reason alone, this structure does relatively well on my list since enchantments and XP are a staple necessity to the mod pack. At number 24, we have the Desert Oasis Village. This structure has about the same level loot as the Windmill Oasis Village, but this structure can have up to 5 Librarian Villagers. For this reason alone, this structure is very solid. 
At number 23, we have a blast from the past, one of the first structures I have ever found in RLCraft, a town Meridor, or Meridor. I just call it a town. This structure seemed common in RLCraft version 2.6, but I haven't seen this structure at all recently. Perhaps it is much more rare in the newer versions of RLCraft, or I'm just unlucky. This structure is really fun to explore, and like a kingdom or island city, there are villagers all over the place. The loot is pretty minimal besides a single house and four wither skeleton skulls, but the loot inside the house is at least decent, and free wither skeleton skulls without fighting alone makes the structure very solid. Three wither skeleton skulls can be found under the structure next to a nether portal after going through some hallways, and the fourth skull can be found on the surface on a small bright yellow structure that is hard to miss. The nice to loot house is found next to the town church, and it contains a few stacks of steak, potato, sugarcane, and some useful early game items such as lapis lazuli and some random enchantment equipment. There is also 13 stacks of arrows in total throughout the structure. At number 22, we have the Pirate Cove, or in other words, the Cult Island. This large structure has three parts to it. The first part is the purple sailed pirate ship that holds a lot of ender pearls and ender eyes, some early game equipment, and food. The ender pearls and eyes alone is very strong, but the second part of the structure is a small building next to a wheat farm that houses three enemy spawners inside as well as two spawners outside. One spawner in particular is an evoker spawner, and as many of you know, evokers drop totems of undying. You can farm these evokers for plenty of totems of undying, and these items are very helpful in RLCraft since you will face deadly situations often. There is also stacks of cooked fish in a dispenser on the first floor if anyone wants fish for aquatic treats. The third part of the cult island is a large building that houses a few villagers, one always being a librarian. A guaranteed librarian adds to the structure for sure. At number 21, we have a structure that most of you already know about, and that structure is none other than the Desert Temple. In RLCraft though, Desert Temples are especially good. Inside Desert Temples, there is a chance for not only enchantment books, golden apples, and ingots, but also a chance for crafting runes. Crafting runes can hold recipes for powerful items such as the shock and end talismans. This fact alone gives the structure a high rank on my list. Moving down to our top 20, we start off with the Kingdom. This structure has 21 gold blocks, plenty of glowstone lamps to break for glowstone, plenty of villagers to trade with, and a few enchantment books to find at the back main structure and some lapis lazuli blocks to break. As well as the structure being one of the more well-protected structures in the game, it also has some decent loot, planning it at the solid rank 20. At number 19, we have a village with a large library. This structure is always solid to find, as every village with a library has a good amount of enchantment books to loot, as well as a chance for a few librarians to be wandering around ready to trade. This structure is safe with a waystone, so making a base at one of these is an easy option in an early game as well. The enchantment books can be found in four chests inside the library, and their quality tends to lean towards the high end. Number 18, the Glowstone Shelter. The Glowstone Shelter has eight chests that can hold crafting rooms as well as strong enchantment books. This structure also has some nether wart and plenty of glowstone lamps to break. Overall though, the fact that this structure has so many enchantment books and crafting room potential this makes the structure very solid. Number 17, the Desert Dungeon. This dungeon has more to it than meets the eye. This structure not only has five chests on the surface containing some emeralds, diamonds, gold, iron, and low-grade enchanted items, but it also has two secret rooms. One with some more basic loot, but the other being a large secret crypt that holds three double chests full of loot. The chests are laced with TNT and surrounded by a few spawners, so you should break the TNT and spawners first but the loot inside the chests is very nice. There are always a few enchanted books in these three chests, as well as often some more diamonds and emeralds. These reasons alone do not put this structure that high on the list though. The real reason is all that stuff, as well as you always find a pig and horse spawn egg in this structure. This dungeon is the only place I know of to get these rare spawn eggs. Number 16, the friendly outpost. I know, the, the name is meh. I call it the Dark Oak Oasis Village. In this structure, you always find decent enchantment books on the first floor and the top floor of the structure. You can walk away with some amazing enchantment books and these structures are fairly common. Plus, the structures are completely safe. On top of this, when you go far enough away from spawn or zero zero, you will find a guaranteed rare endgame enchantment book that the librarian will be selling here. Depending on your world seed, this book will always be one of a handful of amazing enchantments. Advanced Mending 5, Subject 
Subject Mathematics 5, Subject History 5, and Invendum 5, being a few examples of potential enchantments that these librarians will always be selling when you go far enough away from 00. zero. I would say about 10k blocks or so is safe, but it may be a bit further or less, as I have not done exact chord testing. Number 15, the island city, or as I like to call it, the port city. This structure is amazing, as it will contain 14 emerald blocks, 4 gold blocks, 46 iron blocks, and enough wheat XP to get a player to nearly level 50 from zero. This structure also has a large amount of librarian villagers and other miscellaneous items useful for an early game character. The Island City is an amazing structure to find for a new player, as well as an end game player since the iron and emeralds can always come in handy if one is low on either. Number 14, the Battle Tower. In particular, the full Battle Tower, not the crumbling variant. The best loot battle towers go up from the ground and have a golem mini boss at the top. You can cheese the tower by fishing the golem off with a fishing pole or knocking him off with knockback arrows, or you can defeat him fair and square with summons, a bow, or whatever you want really. The tower will come crumbling down and the loot will be scattered if you do this though, so cheesing the tower is much more neat. The loot in the chests on the top two stories is always very solid, at the very least giving diamonds, emeralds, blaze powder, glowstone, mid-tier baubles, and ingots. At the best, you can get XP tomes, nether stars, god tier baubles, and god tier enchantment books. These towers are a staple of RL craft and are certainly structures to look for. Number 13, the Lycanite Dungeon. The Lycanite Dungeon comes in a few color variants, ranging from green to purple to red to orange. The best structure to find in my opinion being the orange one, and the least spectacular one being the green one. Second place is red and third is purple. These dungeons are known for giving great baubles and sometimes great enchantment books, but more importantly these dungeons give soul stones by defeating the bosses that reside within. The green Lycanite dungeons tend to give more beast and worm soul stones, the purple dungeons tend to get more aberration and undead soul stones, the red dungeons give more demon soul stones, and the orange dungeons can give you dragon soul stones. When you get a soul stone you will right click it and a soul bound pet will be given to you to do your bidding and or to ride. The dragon mounts being community ranked the strongest and most useful mounts overall though, makes the orange Lycanite dungeons in particular the best Lycanite dungeon structure to look out for in RL craft, but the other Lycanite dungeons are great to find as well. Number 12, the end city. I particularly do not like the end that much in RL craft since dying to instability can seem a bit random even with ender pearls and warp methods on hand, but the end city certainly makes the end worth exploring. This structure holds the chance for great enchanted gear that you can disenchant for endgame enchantments as well as the chance for enchantment books and a vast amount of shulkers to defeat for shulker shells and shulker hearts. Shulker boxes are incredible items that allow you to potentially carry 27 times more items with you on your adventures, and that is an incredible time saver. You can also get a dragon's head and an elytra in the larger end cities. Although elytras are not very practical in RL craft since your chest is a vital spot, it can still be fun to have one. For these reasons, the end city sits comfortably at rank 12. Moving down to number 11 is the Doom-like Dungeon. The Doom-like Dungeon comes in many variants. The Underwater Doom-like, Nether Doom-like, Obsidian Doom-like, Stone Doom-like, Wood Doom-like, and Gorgon Doom-like dungeon structures all fall into this category at number 11. The Gorgon Doom-like dungeons can have a vast amount of Gorgon spawners and amazing loot in particular. If a few shulkers of Gorgon heads is not good enough, then how about a few XP tomes, enchantment books, and endgame baubles to top it off? You can also sometimes find Lycanite mob spawners for potentially a strong beast to tame and mount. The most alluring potential drop in this dungeon would have to be the fairy ring as well. However, finding a fairy ring in the Doom-like dungeon is very rare. In the underwater Doom-like structures, you can also get vitamin baubles very easily from Elder Guardian, allowing for dual wielding two-handed weapons or using a two-handed weapon with a shield. But more importantly, you can find any Lytra and Shulker boxes in the underwater Doom-like dungeons on occasion, which makes the Doom-like dungeons better than the end cities for this one reason alone. 
Number 10, the roguelike dungeon. This dungeon has amazing enchantment books in the bottom floors and mid-game enchanted gear and items on the other floors of the dungeon. What's more though is that you can also sometimes find secret rooms in these dungeons. If you see any two vertical blocks on the walls of the dungeon, try breaking them. You may find a room for yourself. These rooms can contain a small structure made entirely of emerald blocks. The mobs that you defeat will many times drop their armor as well, and the armor they drop can have put potentially powerful enchantments on them that you can get yourself from disenchanting them. Protection 4 and Unbreaking 3 being incredibly easy to get from this dungeon. Lastly, while the bottom floor of the dungeon has great chest loot, it will also have a few blaze spawners for a nice amount of blaze rods. All in all, this dungeon is very solid, especially for being as common as it is. Number 9, the Temple of Aerolith. This structure is one of the coolest structures in all of our craft. This structure is one of the rarest structures in the game, but contains 357 gold blocks and 19 emerald blocks, ripe for the taking. It is rather easy to just take the blocks and leave, but the structure also has wither skeleton spawners, blaze spawners, and magma cube spawners. This structure is one of those structures that no adventurer overlooks, and for that reason alone, it ranks high on my list at number 9. Number 8, The Dragon Den. While the loot found within a dragon den may not seem as amazing as some other structures on the surface, a dragon's den has the potential of providing the player with one of the most sought after treasures in the entire mod pack, a dragon's egg. A pet dragon can add a tremendous amount to your playthrough, and the dragons in our craft are just straight up cool as well. You also get six or more stacks of emeralds typically with a fortune 3 pickaxe by mining the walls, especially the walls within the smaller dragon dens. You can also get a lot of gold, enchanted items, and sometimes manuscripts from the chest laying around the den. For a new player, manuscripts can be useful as you can add the pages to your bestiary to get in-depth game information such as how to hatch dragon eggs and other neat mob facts. The dragon's den in total gives emeralds, a potential for a dragon egg, gold, and a large amount of dragon scales and or dragon blood, as well as dragon bones. Dragon dens are rightfully one of the most sought after and best structures in RLcraft. Number 7, the Palace of Erevith. This structure only spawns once every 1,666 chunks in quote-unquote hot, dry, and sandy biomes. This structure has no chest loot, but it does contain 3,202 gold blocks and 122 emerald blocks in total. This structure is also completely combat free, so the loot is just there for the taking. Surprisingly in the top 7, 4 of the structures are completely safe without enemies, but this structure has the largest amount of blocks to loot. After mining this fully, you may never want to see another gold block again. Number 6, the Sanctuary of Admies. This structure, similarly to the Palace of Erevith, has no enemies and only wondrous loot. Spawning only once every 1,666 chunks in a jungle, this structure is again insanely rare. This structure, however, is even better than the Palace of Erevith because the structure gives you villagers and even more emerald blocks. For many players, gold isn't a concern at all, but emeralds are incredibly useful. You can loot 312 emerald blocks and 124 iron blocks from the Sanctuary of Admies. Number 5. We have none other than the Castle Dungeon, aka the Four Tower Dungeon. After showing the last two structures, I can get why some people would raise an eyebrow at this ranking, but the Four Tower Dungeon is insanely amazing for loot potential. This dungeon guarantees you get a lot of emeralds from killing mods even without advanced looting 3, but it also has a vast amount of enchantment books and precious materials scattered about the dungeon. The enchantment books are normally up to endgame standards, and the spectral silt you get from the catacombs below the structure can be rather useful for reforging some baubles. The dungeon overall has often an XP tome or two, baubles, silver, emeralds, enchantment books, a large amount of XP, and on top of this, the best loot chest at the top of the structure can simply be looted while on a flying mount. If you want some quick and free amazing loot, the option is available for you. This structure is like a cracked battle tower with a lot of enchantment books and is actually fairly common. Number 4, the Mega Battle Tower. This dungeon is absolutely insane for XP, emeralds, and loot. You can get an amazing bobble relatively commonly here as well. The Ring of the Fairies can be found in the top 3 loot chests rather often. After looting 10 of these structures, I ended up with 2 fairy rings, and the structure isn't too uncommon. 
The Mega Battle Tower structures also let you go from level 0 to level 120 just by clearing the dungeon with an Education 3 sword. This mob grinder is incredibly fun, enemies come at you constantly, and the top loot is oh so worth it. In total, XP tomes, rings of regeneration, lots of gas tiers, silver ingots, amazing bubbles, the potential for a ring of the fairies, lots of mob grinding potential, and this dungeon is common? Sign me up. Number 3. The Forest Stronghold. Taking the coveted crown of the rarest dungeon in the game, as far as I know, the forest dungeon is the most insane dungeon I have ever looted. The loot here is on another level of amazing compared to the other dungeons in the game. The dungeon literally has it all. After looting one of these myself, not even completely mind you, I ended up with 65 emerald blocks, a dozen silver blocks, diamond blocks, 4 xp tomes, over a shulker box of totems of undying, at least one endgame bubble, 18 wither skeleton skulls, a stack of gas tears, a stack of blaze rods, and a shulker box full of enchantment books that I wanted to keep. I left at least a dozen enchantment books as well that I didn't want. This structure also got me from level 120 to level 164, which is a lot of XP. This dungeon is extremely cool with so much to do, both in the underground crypts and the above ground chambers. I have to say I genuinely enjoyed clearing this insane dungeon and I hope to find this dungeon again on my journeys. Number 2. The Shivaxi Monument A monument named after the mod author himself, Shivaxi. It's gotta be jacked with loot, right? You would be correct to think that. This structure has stacks of dragon and sea serpent scales, endgame baubles including the fairy ring and ring of free action, enchanted diamond armor and weapons, the potential for battle burritos, Aussie lining, and so much more. The loot is indeed not always the same, as when I looted a second one with commands I did not see the same loot. This structure though, however amazing, has its drawbacks. While this structure just gives you amazing loot for free, no fighting involved, the structure only spawns every 6,666 chunks, or every 100,000 blocks or so, and only in snowy biomes. If you find this structure in survival, you should consider yourself incredibly lucky. If you do somehow find it though, you will certainly be well rewarded. Number 1. What structure takes the coveted crown as the best structure in all of RLcraft? Well, the result may surprise you. The best structure in all of RLcraft is... The Ice City. Like the Kingdom, Island City, and Town Marador, the Ice City is a large outpost with villagers and buildings. This city being the rarest of the four though, only spawning every 330 frozen ocean chunks. Frozen oceans are already rare enough, but with enough searching, I'm sure you can find this structure too. What makes this structure the best in all of our Elcraft, however, will most likely surprise you. This structure is good because the villagers here are unique. The villagers here are actually broken, and a lot of the trades seem to be centered around a quest line that serves no purpose in our Elcraft. That is besides the point though, just a fun fact. This structure is always the same, so if you find this structure, the same thing will happen to you. There will always be a single villager selling nether stars for 30 emeralds. What is more insane though is that a few villagers will trade obsidian for obsidian and the villager never runs out of the trade. You can trade obsidian with the villagers here infinitely. Now what does that mean exactly? You are always trading one obsidian for one obsidian, so what's the point? The point is that you get XP from trading and you can do this forever. In other words, infinite XP. No glitches, no more farms, no more grinding, no more commands. If you just want XP, you got XP. Completely doable in survival. Thank me later. Oh, and you should probably do this before it is inevitably patched in the unforeseen future. Sorry, not sorry. With that, I am going to wrap up. The top 30 structures in all of our Elcraft, ranked from 30 to 1. I will say a few things though before ending the video. Many of our Elcraft structures sadly cannot be spawned in the world easily because of them being or hidden in JSON or CFG files. So there are a handful of structures that I, as well as the Elcraft community, still have to discover or decipher on their own. Maybe they are just like small rock formations we see in the landscape, or maybe they are the flying castle Laputa. 
Despite not knowing all the structures, I persevered with my research, dove into creative mode to spawn in the hundred or so non-hidden structures in the game file, and alongside my pre-existing knowledge of the mod pack, managed to make this fun video. I know that there is footage of some cool structures in the game that I myself have not found, and perhaps they don't even actually exist, just being structures added by some other mod creators, or just being structures that other players added to their own personal mod pack. But what I do know is that there are a few structures in the files that I do not know how to spawn in. And there are a few structures that are hidden as zeros and ones. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Buh bye I am the XP Warrior. Level up, you fools!